Hi everybody, it's Doug here to give you a quick overview of the Parsec code that we recently released. The routing team here at MadeSafe released the code to our open source asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerant consensus mechanism back in June. But what does it really mean? And why would you want it? Well, consensus is the process by which members of a decentralized network come to an agreement, as there's no central authority that will do this for them. Parsec is a completely decentralized, open source, highly asynchronous BFT consensus mechanism, and we want other projects that are interested to benefit from it. That's why we've made it open source under a GPL v3 license with linking exception. You can download all the code today directly from GitHub. The team has created a tutorial to help you download the software. This showcases how Parsec works and also produces some graphs which should help you to more clearly understand what's going on. You can find these instructions on the MadeSafe GitHub and you'll find the link below this video. Now, before we get started, there's a few things that you'll need to do. First off, in order to clone the repo, you'll need to have Git installed. So if you don't already have it, please download the appropriate package to match your operating system from this link. You'll also need Rust and Cargo. So let's go ahead and download those two from the Rust language website. In order to get the consensus process detailed in graph form, you'll also need GraphViz. Although I'll also show you an online conversion tool later on if you find that easier. Now, downloading GraphViz depends on your operating system. On other Linux platforms, look for GraphViz in your favorite package manager. On Mac OS, Homebrew has a GraphViz package. Brew install GraphViz. And if you're a Windows user, you can find an installer on the GraphViz website. Just make sure to download the MSI version. Now, once you have all of these, you should be ready. So open a terminal window and let's get started. First off, clone the Parsec repo. This will create a new folder in your user profile as seen here. In order to run the test, you'll need to be within this new folder. From here, run the tests with the following commands. And remember to include dump graphs so the tests output the graphs. Including the noflag function will also mean that the location where the graphs have been created will be listed. You'll now see the tests running. This may take a few minutes. Great, so now you've run the tests, you can view the graphs to get a clearer idea of how consensus was reached. If you open one of these folders in your file manager, you'll see a series of files detailing consensus for each node at each event. So if you've installed GraphViz, you should see a dot dot file and an SVG file for each event. If you only have dot dot, then you can copy the text and place it in an online converter, such as visjs.com, to view the graphs or install GraphViz as we described at the beginning of the video and then run this in the folder that you want to see the graphs from. You should now have both the SVG and the dot files. If you open these SVG files, you'll see how Alice, Bob, Carol, Dave, Eric, Gina and Hank came to consensus. Now, it may look like a confusing mess of lines and boxes a little bit, but trust me, it's a lot simpler than it looks because these graphs show how each node reaches a conclusion based on each node casting a single vote, highlighted in cyan blue. The gossip events that make that vote valid are highlighted in crimson red. And the gossip events that contain special values for estimates, bin values, auxiliary values and decisions are labeled with the information needed to understand the decision process. Okay, so let's walk through one of these graphs. If we take um, Parsec Graphs Minimal Network Alice1.svg as an example, you can see that each node has their initial starting point 
and individual information at a underscore zero, b underscore zero, c zero, and d zero. Each node then votes, indicated by the blue square, a underscore one, b underscore one, c underscore one, and d underscore one. As you can see, in this simple example, they all have exactly the same payload, 9kkpz. The subsequent red square indicates when each node sees the supermajority of events carrying votes for any payload. And such events are called valid blocks. And from these valid blocks, Parsec can begin. You can see that the initial estimates here give three true and one false outcome. The estimates represent the answer to the question, should I consider this particular vote in this particular election? If we've strongly seen a vote, then we know that it will be seen, and eventually strongly seen, by enough other nodes. So this is the question that we answer. We're performing as many of these elections as there are nodes, in parallel, to determine the set of nodes that we consider for this consensus process. We propagate these estimates through binary value gossip, or BV gossip, to fill the set of bin values. You may read the specifics of BV gossip in the Parsec RFC, but the takeaway is that it filters estimates that were proposed by over a third of the nodes. Because at most, a third minus one of the nodes are malicious. This guarantees then that all the values in the set, bin values, was proposed as an estimate by at least one honest node. Now the org's value highlighted here is the first estimate to make it to the set bin value for each node, for, for each vote. Through continual gossip, you can now see movement towards consensus as the decision values get populated. This decision occurs through a three-step process determined by the Concrete Coin protocol. If you want to know more about this process in detail, head along to our RFC or the white paper if you really love maths. Now, as this graph relates to Alice, we see her to get to consensus, even though some of the others have not. And that's OK, because we know that through Parsec, all nodes will reach the same outcome eventually. And you can check the other nodes in this test if you want to prove it. Now, hopefully this has given you a little bit more information about how Parsec works. But if you've got any questions at all, please do leave us a comment and we'll be happy to help.